Sleep Paralysis by Joshua G. Creepy Pasta Steam. Read for you by the author. According to Merriam Webster's dictionary, sleep paralysis is defined as a complete temporary paralysis occurring in connection with sleep and especially upon waking. While there is nothing incorrect about the definition itself, it is, perhaps, a bit sanitized, for lack of a better term. In reality, the experience is much more than the definition given. The confusion is usually the first thing you notice. What's going on? Why can't I move? These thoughts soon transition your feelings of confusion to that of fear and, sometimes, outright terror. But don't worry. As the definition so blandly put it, this is temporary. Soon, you'll regain all of your capabilities, but you will still probably be shaken up quite a bit. Personally, I prefer the old-school terms for this condition. A visit from the old hag being one of them. I honestly find them more accurate in describing the experience, and they convey what the simplified dictionary definition left out. Auditory and visual hallucinations that often accompany it. It's most often experienced for a variety of reasons, such as stress and fluctuating sleep schedules, but physically, it's experienced most while sleeping on your back. Fortunately for me, I'm a side sleeper. I only sleep on my back or stomach when I'm so exhausted I practically collapse onto the bed from exhaustion. My most recent rendezvous with the old hag occurred right after moving into a new house a few years ago. My air conditioning was busted and it was the middle of summer. I fell asleep, face down, and was unable to move when I woke. Pretty much right away I knew what was happening and thought of this as more of icing on the cake for an already shitty day. One thing that was odd was this growling sound that kept repeating on a consistent rhythm. I'm not exaggerating when I say that it sounded like a demonic dog straight from hell growling at my bedside. After a little bit of thought, I soon realized that it was the oscillating fan moving back and forth. At that point, all I could think was... Thank fuck I'm not sleeping on my back. Can't imagine the shit I'd probably be seeing right now. Shortly after, I regained all of my functions. The demon dog was banished back to sleepy hell. And I proceeded to get cleaned up, dressed with clothes that felt like they were fresh from the dryer, and headed to my job as a night shift internet tech support rep. My first encounter, however, I wasn't so lucky. I was around six years old, and my family was going through the most devastating shit we'd ever been through. My uncle, by marriage, turned out to be a fraud and a con artist and murdered my paternal grandmother in cold blood. Don't ask me why. None of the adults in my family will really talk about it or tell me much of anything. I'm guessing he borrowed money and was afraid that he'd have to pay it back now that he and my aunt were getting divorced. Anyway, a few weeks later, my own parents split up and decided on divorce as well. The stress of the recent events breaking an already crumbling marriage between them. I moved out of the only home I'd ever known, and my mother and I moved in with my maternal grandparents. I didn't understand why all of this was happening. As if this wasn't bad enough, 
the murder and missing body of my grandmother was splashed all over the local news. Needless to say, once most of the parents of the other children in my first grade class found out that their child was in the same class as a child from this clearly fucked up family on TV, they told them to stay away from me. I lost every friend I had, save one or two. Kids being kids, they parlayed the stay away from him instruction to a let's haze the shit out of him pass. My life was hell. Look, I'm not trying to make this a sob story. You're probably wondering just what the hell all of this has to do with sleep paralysis. Well, I'll get right to it. The stress level I experienced was way beyond what any six-year-old should ever have to endure. The only escape I really had was some animated Disney movies. Robin Hood, by far, was my favorite. I watched it all the time, and I'm fairly certain that's what created it. One night, probably around the month after moving in with my grandparents, I fell asleep on my back. I'm not sure how long I was asleep, but when I woke up, I couldn't move. It was like something invisible was sitting on my chest and was holding down my arms and legs. Scared out of my mind, I wanted to call for my mother, who was in the bed next to mine. However, before I had a chance to do that, I saw something at the foot of my bed. It looked like... ears. It was an animal's ears. My anxiety quickly escalated into terror as this thing began to slowly, deliberately rise up. At first it was just its head. It was a boar with black fur and a tarnished gold ring going through its nose. Its teeth were jagged, sharp, and sticking out of its mouth. It slowly stood up fully. It was wearing armor with dirty, black spots all over it. Then it looked down and raised its weapon by its side. It was an executioner's axe, blood dripping from the bottom of its blade. Imagine the most evil-looking Disney villain you've ever seen and multiply it by ten. I don't think that there was anything that could have possibly scared me more at that age. I was too afraid to think, too afraid to move. All I could do was stare into its horrible red eyes and watch it stare back at me. It felt like hours as it scowled down at me with that hate-filled, angry expression on its face. Then, it smiled at me. It smiled the most malevolent, vicious smile I had ever seen. It revealed row upon row of teeth inside of its mouth. Without words being exchanged, I knew exactly what it wanted to do to me. I was going to be its next meal. Thoughts of being devoured alive broke into my mind, and as soon as I had those thoughts, its red, burning eyes shifted to the small passage between my bed and my mom's. I had to act. I had to act now or die. I screamed in pure terror. Mom! Mom! It's coming! It's going to kill me! I'm not sure when I regained the use of my arms, but I reached out for her as she woke up in just as much terror as I was in. All the while, I knew it was on its way, and I knew, I just knew, it would snag one of my arms in its vile mouth and pull me under the bed and feast on me. It seemed like slow motion as my mom reached out and got me and pulled me to her bed. I made the mistake of looking down as I was being pulled from my bed to hers. 
I saw it coming. Its jaw was unhinged like a snake, with a thousand razors for teeth. It was directly under me, waiting for me to fall. I saw deep inside of its black abyss of a mouth, and I knew I was going to die. I screamed again and looked forward as my mom took me into her arms. It's between the beds! It's still there! Of course, it wasn't. It was gone. My whole body was shaking and ached with pain as I stared into the now fully lit hallway. My grandparents came in to check on us. All I could do was stare blankly ahead at nothing in particular and sob. I'm not sure how long I was like that, or how many times they asked me what happened before I snapped out of it and explained everything. You just had a bad dream, my mom said. No, no mom, it was there. I saw it when you pulled me over here. You have to believe me. My mom, not convinced, but wanting to ease my fears so we could all go back to sleep, searched along with my grandparents, under the beds, in the closet, the hall, and everywhere else it could have hidden. It's gone now, I promise. My grandfather told me as he hugged me tightly. I nodded, and my mom held me as we tried to go back to sleep. Once the lights went back out, I stared into the hallway, which they decided to leave lit for the night, and kept vigil, watching for its return. I promised myself that I would never watch that movie again promise that I would inadvertently keep. By the time the fear of the thing had left, I was too old to watch it anyway. Eventually, after what felt like hours of watching the hallway, my eyes grew heavy, and I fell asleep.